This week, a special edition of Mags on Media as we give you an in-depth global view on brand communication. We're in conversation with two leading agency chief executives who were in South Africa. How do they see 2014? What are the creative and the strategic challenges? And what are their views on the South African and African markets? A very warm welcome and thank you for joining us. Now, Carter Murray is the chief executive of Draft FCB. It's one of the world's largest global advertising agency networks. During his career, he's partnered with brands such as Nestle, Kraft Foods, Procter & Gamble, as well as Barclays. He was in South Africa recently visiting the South African operation that looks after iconic brands like Toyota and Coca-Cola. Murray is bullish about 2014 and this market in particular. He sat down for a lengthy one-on-one. -on -one. Carter Murray, a very warm welcome to Thank Mags. Thank you very much. Media. Great to be here. I, I want to start with the big picture stuff, if I can. Uh, are the good times back as far as advertising is concerned? One global media agency predicting growth next year of close to 5%. Are you in a good mood? Well, I'm in a very good mood. Um, I think we've got exciting times ahead of us. Um, are good times back? I think it's a little early to say. Um, I think we talk about living in an uncertain world. I think we're in an even more uncertain world than we've ever been. But I think the signs are good. I think especially with the U.S., given the importance of that economy um, and seeing that they seem to have uh, come to some agreements to help the economy move forward finally there, um, and seeing some of the opportunities around the world, absolutely. Um, is there some caution? Yes. Um, I was just in Brazil earlier this week, and you look at the GDP growth there compared to two or three years ago, and it's definitely signs of slowing down. Still growing, just not as fast. So there is a lot to be optimistic about, but also I think a little bit of caution. All right, if there is a degree of optimism, where's the money going? Traditional, as we know it, print, radio, television, uh, or is there more of a drive, a more aggressive drive towards digital solutions? Well, you know, obviously digital is a place that is growing at high speed. And I think if you look at the US, you can see it having a, a huge impact uh, in how marketers think about, about connecting with consumers and helping clients grow their business. Um, it's interesting in the journey that I've been doing in the recent weeks around markets, uh, just to be reminded that you know, television is still hugely important. As you know, in South Africa, if, brands, you know, if big brands are not on television, um, they're really not going to have the impact that they need to really move the dial. Um, the same is in Brazil. And if you're in Thailand and you're not on television, your brand really will not get the impact that it needs to really move the business. Of course, because digital is where a lot of budgets are moving to, and at, at much higher speeds, I would say, in, in America and in Europe than in other markets. You know, we tend to focus on that area, but I think one of the things that I've seen is we still need to focus on making sure we have great creative work in some of our more traditional media as well as in our new media. Let's talk about the speed of digital, though. Um, WPP's Martin Sorrell says by 2015, 45% of group revenue will come from digital advertising. Is he overcooking it? Look, Martin's a very smart man, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and tell you that he's overcooking it. Um, I think if you speak to him or, or to Michael Roth or to Morris Levy, everyone will talk to you about the importance of digital. You know, I think absolutely when we talk that, you know, that far out, it's, go it's, going to be, um, it's going to be more and more important. I think that's why we're all investing there. And I think investment is a key word. I think we are experimenting, investing, trying to work out how to succeed in that space. And everyone is. And it's critically important. But again, when you say 45%, I think it's important that we don't forget the 55%. And I think our clients are reminding us every day that we have to look at the whole mix and not just focus on the future. We also have to deliver today. Let's talk about the whole mix as far as developing markets are concerned. Why is a market like South Africa good for a global agency like Draft? Well, there's two or three things. I think first and foremost, for if you look at our industry, some of the great creative directors and some of the leaders on a global stage have come from South Africa. Um, I've just a point, you know, asked Jonathan Harries to be my creative partner globally. He's from South Africa. This has traditionally been a hotbed for talent. So I think on a global stage, South Africa has always punched um, at, a fairly, at a fairly good setting. Now, I also think South Africa, when you talk about it being the rainbow nation, 
I think there is a, a, a such a rich cultural diversity and, and, and there's such a rich culture in general here that this is this is a, a uh, use the word hotbed again, but it's, it's, it is a hotbed for creativity. There is an opportunity here to really create great ideas and great campaigns that I think can travel. And I think we've seen that in the past, and I think it should continue to do that. Local affiliates of global ad agencies don't always like the mothership, though. They <laughs> tell me about onerous accounting demands. They talk about the repatriation of, of money, of profit. Uh, that's a criticism that you would be well aware of, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mm. You know, I, I think it's clients ask mm. us for mm. value every day. Mm. And you were telling me earlier, we all have to report into somebody. Yeah. You know, I believe I report into the office heads as well. It's, it's a two-way relationship. Um, and I think if you're running an operation and you have a good operation in a market and you have to contribute financially to a holding company or to the center, you have a right to expect a service in return and, and, and value in return. And I think, you know, that's part of me being here, you know, to, to come and try and help add value to John and his team to make sure that you know, I can go and see the clients here. Um, I can bring some of the knowledge and expertise from other markets around the world and share it with the team here. So I think, um, I think absolutely there is, in a lot of countries, that, that, that tension between the global and the local. I think some clients feel that as well. It's an industry, it's not just an industry issue, that's in any global organization you feel that. My job is to try and make sure that these companies, these, our local agencies and our, lo and, and our local teams feel part of something bigger um, and so part of something that's inspiring and part of something that's important. And that's what I'm going to be working on with everybody in the coming months. Let's talk a little bit about uh, agency bounce back, if we can. The big South African advertising story at the beginning of the year, you're well aware of it, was that Draft FCB in Johannesburg losing the Vodacom account. Uh, it was a talking point for months. How does an agency bounce back from a, from a loss like that? I came here and I had a question, you know, what was the reaction? So I've gone to meet the clients here, and I almost feel like the clients have doubled down in their commitment to us, which is reassuring, obviously, in my role, but also quite inspiring. Because we have a scale and we have quality of talent in our company, and we're still one of the top two agencies in South Africa, I think we were able to use that to make us stronger, and we were able to use that to make sure that we reaffirmed to the clients we have that we are completely committed to them, and even bring some new clients on board uh, to replace that. So I think it comes back to people. When you have quality, I think, I think you, uh, you, move, you roll with those things as they happen. It does beg the question, though, is there a life cycle in the client-agency relationship? Sometimes you hit the, you hit the end of the runway. It's, it's, a, good, it's, it's a good question. I, I've always worked um, with relationships that are long-standing, you know, try to work with relationships that are long-standing. Um, one of my first clients that I worked on, uh, Aaliyah Burnett, was a 54-year relationship. I actually think those are the healthiest ones. Those are the ones built on trust. Those are the ones built on commitment. I think life cycles come to an end when we as agency, as, as, for two reasons. One, when I think the agency partner, we, we're in a service business, and I think we forget about what's important in the partnership. And if there is an issue in a relationship or in, in a team structure, we don't change fast enough. The other way that you lose business is with global realignment. And that can work in a positive way and in a negative way. So, um, you know, if we win the global new business, other local agencies will suffer. If there is a client which is already aligned somewhere else, we will suffer from those global relationships. Those are the two main reasons I think you come to an end. I'm in it for the long term, and I want my teams to be in it for the long term. I want us, when we talk to clients, to be their partner and intend to be their partners for many years to come. This is a Mags on Media special as we give you a world view on brand communications. Later, we're in conversation with Daniel Morell, who heads the giant Wunderman Marketing Agency. News that moves. ENCA.com.